All right, guys, this absolute destruction on my desk here is because once again, I have been testing wireless microphones. I hate doing this more than anything, but I love you guys. And that's the reason why I've been torturing myself today. I've got an update for you on uh, my new DJI mic system that DJI sent me. And I've got two new systems that I've never heard of or used before. One by Sarah Monic, another one by Shure. And man, I have learned a lot. Let's get into it. Just to give you a quick update on my DJI system, I purchased their new lav mic system myself. It had major issues. So which one is the wire? I found it to the other one. Which one is the wire? Check, check, check. Still to this day, I'm not exactly sure what was wrong with it. I returned that mic, DJI sent me a new one, and the new one has been working perfectly for me so far. Obviously, if I ever have a problem with this mic, I will let you guys know, but I'm hoping that the issue that I had with the previous mic was because I had a bad unit. I hope that it was just broken and there was something wrong with it, and I'm never going to have those problems again. We'll see. For the last few months, I've also been using the Rode Wireless Pro system. I absolutely love this system, and the one unique feature that this system has that none of the other microphones have is internal time code. I was super excited about this, but when I really started digging into what it takes to use time code and sync everything up in post, it was too much of a headache. So I haven't actually used time code myself, but for those of you who do, you'll probably enjoy this system the most. Now, because I've done so many mic videos, all these new companies are reaching out and saying, hey, we wanna send you our mics too. So I just got the Saramonic Blink 500 B2 Plus system. This system is extremely similar to DJI's. The charging cases are almost identical, just slightly larger. The microphones are very similar, maybe a little flatter and wider but uh, very close in size. Both of them have the clips as well as the magnets on the outside. So I really like the build quality of the system. However, one huge flaw with this system is that it doesn't have what I think is maybe the most important new feature that I kind of think every microphone should have, and that is internal recording. This is a wireless system only, and if there's any problem with that wireless connection, that's the audio you're stuck with. Both Rode and DJI have internal recording and it's the type of thing that you might say, well, I don't know that I'm ever gonna use that. I guarantee you eventually you will need it. Audio is crazy, it fails all the time. And so now that I've used microphones that have internal recording, I never wanna use anything that doesn't. Now, even though this system doesn't have internal recording, there may still be a reason to buy it because this is shockingly cheap. You can get this entire system with the receiver and two transmitters, the charging case, everything for just $129, which is absolutely nuts. Next up, I was sent the Shure MoveMic 2 receiver kit. Now, I was excited to test out the system because Shure makes some very expensive, very high-end microphones. I was expecting this system to sound the best out of all of these. When I opened up this box, I was a little shocked to feel each one of these mics. They are incredibly lightweight. This is the smallest mic by far also the lightest by far. It almost feels like this thing is hollow. It doesn't come with the magnet like all of the other three, and I really do like the option to use the magnet. However, this is so small and so lightweight, this is going to clip onto any shirt better than anything else just because it's so light. A lot of times with these other mics, if you clip them on your shirt, they'll have a tendency to like flip over or flip like that just because they're so heavy. This Shure microphone is so small, there's no way that's going to happen with this one. One thing that I really dislike about the design of the Shure system is that instead of having a charging case for both the transmitters and the receiver, the receiver is strangely separate from the entire system. So you're going to have to remember to charge two things, the charging case, which will charge both transmitters, and then you're also going to have to plug in the receiver every time you're done with that as well. And the receiver is weirdly large. It's strange how small these transmitters are. And then this receiver is like three times bigger than any of the other receivers. I don't understand why. And then to make matters worse, when I turn the Shure system on, the transmitters did not automatically connect to the receiver. I had to go through this manual process and it only connected to one of the transmitters. I sat there for 20 minutes trying to get the second transmitter to connect. I read the manual. I was doing everything the manual told me to do. I could never get it to connect, which seems crazy because every other system like this I've tested, you just open the box and they automatically connect. I only ever got one transmitter to work. 
The Shure system also doesn't come with internal recording, which is a huge deal breaker for me, but I thought if this system is really affordable, maybe I can still recommend it. However, I looked up the price. It's the most expensive of all of these. This thing costs $500. Why does it cost so much? I don't know, but it must sound the best. Let's get into the audio tests. All right, we're first going to do an audio test at chest height. Which mic sounds the best? All right, we're first going to do an audio test at chest height. Which mic sounds the best? All right, we're first going to do an audio test at chest height. Which mic sounds the best? All right, we're first going to do an audio test at chest height. Which mic sounds the best? Now, I listen to all of these mics on two different sets of headphones, as well as my desktop monitors over here. And by just a little bit, I feel like the Sarah Monix actually sounded the best, which is funny because they are by far the cheapest. And ironically, the worst sounding microphone by far was the most expensive. This sure sounded really bad. Next, let's do a test very close to my mouth. Which one sounds the best now? Next, let's do a test very close to my mouth. Which one sounds the best now? Next, let's do a test very close to my mouth. Which one sounds the best now? Next, let's do a test very close to my mouth. Which one sounds the best now? This second test made the differences between these mics much more apparent. Again, I felt like the Saramonic sounded the best, which was shocking. And once again, by far the worst, the Shure microphone really sounded bad. Again, Rode and DJI sounded really good, but uh, maybe when it's this close to my mouth, I prefer the sound out of DJI. Finally, I wanted to do a range test on each one of these microphones, so I plugged them all in and started walking away from the camera. It's really apparent how important this internal recording is because these microphones can drop out so fast, especially if they don't have direct line of sight. All right, let's do a range test. Three, two, one. Once I got a little bit away, each time I turned my back to the camera, all of the mics would drop out. And then when I would turn back around, all of the mics would reconnect. Now, eventually I got so far away that all of the mics disconnected, even when they had direct line of sight. And as I started walking back, I was interested to see which microphone would connect first. DJI seems to have the best range. It was the first to connect. However, the connection is so bad that this audio really isn't usable, but it still was the first to connect if they're connected because I can always recover their audio. I'm curious to see which one of these mics load. Back then, I think we're about the same. Now, when I got back to the camera, I realized one of my mics never reconnected at all. Guess which one? The most expensive one. So, when I got back to check this, the Shure microphone would not reconnect, which is a huge problem so after disconnecting it does not automatically reconnect which is crazy um, i had to reset the whole unit to get it to come back to life so just to quickly summarize here the shore system is the most expensive it has the least ergonomic system in terms of two separate things that need to be charged it has the most complicated setup process which i couldn't ever figure out. I could only get half of it to connect. It also has the worst range in the sense that if you get out of range and then come back into range, it just won't even connect. And it also has the worst sound quality. So uh, I cannot recommend Shure's system. Ceramonic, a company I've never heard of before, created a microphone that is far cheaper than the competition and it also sounds the best. That blew my mind. It does not have internal recording, which makes it difficult for me to recommend. However, if you're going to be filming exclusively over a short distance and you know you're never going to need that internal recording, I think this is a great option. Rode and DJI are battling for first place here. They have the most features, they have the best build quality, and of course they both have internal recording. Rode has not been available in the United States for months now. I think they might've been tied up in some sort of patent infringement thing, but I just looked it up and they are available to buy in the United States now. So if you're looking for a mic with internal recording and time code, Rode system is basically your only option at the moment. If you don't care about time code, DJI's system is fantastic as well. I actually prefer 
prefer the size and shape of DJI's system over Rode's that is slightly larger. That being said, there is one feature that Rode has that DJI does not, and this one is very important to me. It has the screw down locking mechanism for their lav mic input. I have spent a lot of money over the years on these MKE-2 Sennheiser lav mics, and these were very expensive. They sound fantastic, and they literally do not work with DJI's system. And not only do they work with Rode's, but they will actually screw in and lock down on these road transmitters. They will not pull out here. So if you already own professional lav mics like this, or you may want to invest in them in the future, then Rode is the clear winner here. Each month for the next year, F-Stoppers is creating a new photography contest that is totally free to join. And for March, the genre is wedding photography. And I'm excited to say that our guest judge for this contest is going to be Pi Jerza himself. You probably know who he is, but if you don't, he's literally one of the most successful wedding photographers working today. Not only is he judging this contest, but he's putting up the first place prize, a $2,000 mentorship program that's going to last 12 months. If you have an interest in photography and you've been thinking about breaking into the wedding photography or portrait market, or you want to take your business to the next level, this is definitely the program for you. Second place for this contest is going to be the Loop Deck CT Plus. This is an incredible customizable input device for Mac or PC. You can use this to speed up your editing or if you do online live streaming, this is going to make things so much easier. Third place is going to get a free tutorial from the F Stopper store. And we're gonna keep up our momentum and discount another one of our tutorials significantly. This time it's going to be our wedding photography tutorial. This tutorial did come out a while ago, as you can tell by my gorgeous hair I used to have, but the majority of this information is still relevant today. I used to be a professional wedding photographer myself for almost 15 years, and I lay everything I know out in this 14 hour tutorial. We've been selling it for years for $300. It's currently for sale for just 50 bucks. 